Hello everyone and welcome. According to the industry that has made a ton of money selling combustion engines, the combustion engine is going nowhere. And of course they'd say that, but here's the thing, they're right. So in this video I want to discuss why the combustion engine still has a long life ahead of it and some of the challenges facing electric cars. And I want to be clear about my goal. I'm not saying that you shouldn't buy an electric car. I bought an electric car and I think they're great. My goal with this video is to provide you with evidence that there are still many good reasons to continue improving combustion engines. So a common comment I get on this channel whenever I'm talking about a new piece of internal combustion engine technology is why would the manufacturer continue to develop the combustion engine when we know the future is electric and when they could be investing that money in electric cars. So a big part of this video is for selfish reasons. So the next time that someone in the comments is bashing combustion engines, I can say, hey, you know, there still are good reasons why they exist. Here's the link because I'm certainly going to continue making videos about cool and interesting combustion technology as well as technology involving electric cars. So we're going to divide the video into four categories. The science, the environment, the cost, and the consumer. In each category, we'll discuss the associated challenges. Okay, so let's start off with science. From a physics standpoint, the biggest challenge currently facing electric cars is energy density. In other words, how much energy can you put into a certain space? So here I have a gallon of water. Now, according to the EPA, if this was a gallon of gasoline, it would have the equivalent of 33.7 kilowatt hours of energy in it. So in just this one gallon of gasoline, there is more energy than in the entire battery of the first generation Nissan Leaf. Now, times have changed. Batteries have improved since the first generation Nissan Leaf. So I found a study in 2018 that was looking at eight different lithium ion battery manufacturers. And of them, I looked at what was the best energy density they found in a lithium ion battery cell. That number was 684 watt hours per liter. So I want to provide a visual demonstration of what that means. So here we have a gallon of gas. And now what I want to see is how much space do we need in order to have that same amount of energy, but in the form of lithium ion batteries. And we're going to do that using cans of LaCroix. Not because I'm sponsored. This isn't sponsored. I'm just basic. And so if you do the math, which of course I did, the equivalent energy by volume of one gallon of gasoline, you would need 139 cans of LaCroix representing our lithium ion batteries. Now, this is more than just an elaborate plan to make my groceries tax deductible. This is wild to look at. By volume, gasoline is 13 times more energy dense than the best of lithium ion batteries in 2018. And you might be saying to yourself, well, this isn't really that fair of a comparison visually because all of the gasoline is tucked away in one nice little convenient spot, whereas the lithium ion is spread out in all these individual cells. But that's kind of the point because gasoline just goes into a tank and it just sits in one spot. Batteries are made up of thousands of individual cells which aren't that space efficient. So keep in mind what we're looking at here is the volume required for just the cells. This doesn't take into any consideration cell connections, wiring, cooling routing that's going through these batteries, and the overall structure that's holding these all together. So the space is actually going to be much larger than what you see here. And on top of that, remember, we're looking at the best example from a study in 2018. If we were to look at the worst example, the energy density was less than half, and that would mean we would double what you see here just to have the same amount of energy as one gallon of gasoline by volume. Now, so far we've just talked about volume, and of course volume is important for packaging within a car. So if previously you only needed this much space, but now you need this much space, well, then obviously you have a bit of a problem because you either have to take away from existing space within the vehicle or your vehicle has to be larger to fit all of that energy. But we haven't yet touched on weight and this is where gasoline has an even larger advantage. So one gallon of gasoline weighs about six pounds and it has the equivalent energy of 33.7 kilowatt hours. Now from that same study I looked at previously, the best battery's energy density was about 240 watt hours per kilogram. What does that mean? Well, if this can were to be gasoline, represented here by LaCroix's best flavor, 
Pamplemousy, then it would weigh 50 times less than the equivalent amount of energy in lithium ion form. And remember, this is just talking about the battery cells. The battery pack itself would be even heavier. So if you were to look at a gallon of gasoline that weighs six pounds, this has more energy in it than the original Leaf's battery pack, which weighed over 600 pounds, over a hundred times heavier for less energy. So why is this a problem? Well, it depends on what you're trying to do with that battery. If you have a lithium ion battery pack at your house as a backup energy source for when the power goes out, it's not really a problem. You don't care how much space it takes up. You don't care how heavy it is. It's just sitting somewhere and it's able to help you out. If you then stick it in a car, however, it means that car is significantly heavier. And the larger the item that gets, kind of the more detrimental it becomes to that object. So think about a plane or a train or, you know, big freight trucks or when you're towing. Uh, so these are scenarios where it becomes challenging to, because of how much a lithium ion battery pack weighs. So if you were to think about a plane, for example, you know, it's trying to fly, it needs to be as light and as compact as possible. So if you were to have enough batteries on board that, thing, that the thing could actually fly somewhere, it would take up all of the space within it and you wouldn't have any additional weight allowed for passengers. The thing would just be full of batteries, it'd be really heavy, and sure it would fly somewhere, but it wouldn't take anybody with it and it wouldn't go very far. So right now we're really in the sweet spot where passenger cars make sense, but things larger than that don't quite yet. The good news is battery technology continues to improve. So as that battery technology continues to improve, the battery itself will take up less space and it will weigh less and eventually we'll get closer and closer towards what we have with gasoline. We're not going to get here, but we can reduce it and it can improve significantly. We're just not there yet. So what does that mean? Well, if there are applications today that currently require combustion engines, we might as well make those combustion engines as clean and as good and as efficient as possible while we still need them. Okay, so now let's talk about cost. And there are two issues here. So first of all, electric cars are expensive. According to this automotive engineering magazine from SAE, electric cars are about $12,000 more for the initial purchase price. So yes, the maintenance costs and the operating costs are going to end up being lower, but that initial purchase price is significantly higher. And so because of that, a lot of people avoid buying them. Now, part of this is a chicken and egg scenario because, because not many people are buying electric cars, not many electric cars are produced, and because not many electric cars are produced, they're very expensive. Economies of scale, the more you make, the cheaper they become. So in this scenario, if more people bought electric cars, they'd be cheaper, but more people can't buy electric cars because they're too expensive. Now, I wanna be very clear in that I don't think the initial purchase price is the big deterrent from electric cars. I don't think that's the big reason why we don't see mass adoption. And reason being is that if the only thing people were concerned about when buying a new car was total cost of ownership, we'd all just be driving old 90s Honda Civics. And we're not, we buy new toys. Uh, car buying is a very emotional experience. It's not a logical experience. And because of that, all of the luxury brands exist. If all of us only thought about total cost of ownership, no luxury brand, period, would exist. No fun cars would exist. We just have all the boring, simple machines that could get us from point A to point B that cost us the least amount. But people buy things that they enjoy, and so because of that reason, I don't think it's that strong of an argument that cost alone is what is keeping people out of electric cars. However, where cost does get involved, and where I think this does play a role, is in terms of profit for the manufacturers. According to a study by Alex Partners, in order for an electric car to be profitable today, it needs to cost $48,000 quite a bit. And the powertrain cost for that electric car is about $16,000 for a long range EV versus about $6,500 for a combustion car. So think about this. If you're a manufacturer and you want to sell a car to a customer for $30,000, you can make significantly more profit if you sell that $30,000 car as a combustion car versus an electric car. And for better or worse, manufacturers are going to follow what makes them profitable. And in this case, it's combustion engines. All right, so let's move on to the environment and talk about why we should be improving internal combustion engines. So according to this reading, 
uh, there's going to be about two to three billion internal combustion engines sold between now and 2045. That alone sounds like a pretty good reason to improve them and make them better. If we're going to sell that many anyways, they might as well be as clean as possible. But let's look at it from a manufacturer's point of view. You knew I was going to work a whiteboard into this video. So let's say you're a small car manufacturer with a hypothetical name, something like Mazda. And your goal for your company is to improve your overall emissions. And so you're a small company, you don't have a ton of money, and so you have to make a decision of what do you want to do with that research and development money. Do you want to put it into an electric car, or do you want to improve your combustion cars? So let's say you choose to create an electric car. And that ends up accounting for about 10% of your sales, which is actually an optimistic number based on today's sales data. And those 10%, thankfully, these electric cars are twice as emissions friendly life cycle versus the combustion cars. Great, you've improved them, but it's only 10% of your sales. So your overall emissions are only reduced by 5% because you still have 90% of your cars unchanged. Well, then you could also choose to, instead of spending that money on developing an electric car, to develop a better internal combustion engine and create a new technology that reduces emissions by, let's say, 10%. 10% isn't a crazy number to improve emissions by. Now, because all of your vehicles are combustion engines, that 10% applies across the board, and that means you have an overall emission savings of 10%. So it was actually cleaner and likely much more profitable for your business to develop a new internal combustion engine technology than to go the EV route. And part of this, yes, is due to consumer choice, which brings us to our last point. Finally, let's talk about consumers. So a large part of selling a car is knowing that there exists a market out there to purchase that car. In 2018 and in 2019, the global market share for electric cars was about 2%. So if you owned a car dealership and 100 people came to your car dealership and bought cars, only two of them walked out with an electric car. Now, marketing is the business of teaching you what you want to buy. And so part of this is that we've been marketed combustion engine cars more often, unless you've been watching recent Super Bowl commercials. But it also does come down to consumer choice, and that plays a massive role. Lots of people still want combustion cars. It's easy to think, why doesn't everyone have an electric car if you have a garage and you have a way to fast charge that vehicle? However, something I've always said and will continue to say is that people are lazy. So if you want to convince people to buy something, it needs to be more convenient than what they already have. Now, if you have a garage and again, a way to charge it, often electric cars will be more convenient than a combustion car. However, if you live in an apartment or if you street park your vehicle, which hello, a lot of people do, then a combustion car is easily going to be more convenient. And so a lot of people are going to choose that. People also often buy cars that they rarely need for their intended purpose, say 5% of the time. That's why you see a ton of pickup trucks, because one day they might need to buy mulch. But along that 5% mentality, people buy gasoline cars because they know they can road trip anywhere and everywhere. I've experienced this with my Tesla. There are trips in it that I have intentionally taken my Crosstrek instead because the charging infrastructure doesn't exist where I want to go. So if you only have one car, it's often very logical for it to be a combustion car. If you're a family with multiple cars in a garage, it makes complete sense to have at least one of those vehicles as electric for everything around town. But that's not everyone's case. And then if we take back into consideration that currently 2% of buyers are buying electric cars, and let's say again, you're Mazda, you're trying to clean up your fleet, and so you invest everything into an electric car that only 2% of the people buying your cars are buying, then you're not really cleaning up your fleet because not enough people are buying that car in order for it to actually make a difference. So again, none of this is to say that electric cars are dumb or that you shouldn't buy one. I love them, I love mine, but there are still many good reasons why combustion engines still exist and why they should continue to be improved. So ultimately, I'm going to keep making videos about pre-chamber ignition or gasoline compression ignition engines or whatever else automakers think up, mostly because I think it's cool, but also because it's actually logical based on today's circumstances. So thank you all so much for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave those below.